In this video, we're going to be looking at two examples of applying Arrhenius' equation. So for the first one, we have this problem that says that the activation energy for the decomposition of HI gas to H2 and iodine is 186 kilojoules per mole. The rate constant at 550 Kelvin, 55 Kelvin, is 3.52 times 10 to the negative 7 liters per mole per second. What is the rate constant at 645 Kelvin, right? So in order to figure out a question like this, we're going to actually need to massage uh, Arrhenius's equation a little bit more to uh, to get a different expression so that we can relate two different rates, right? So we're, what we're asked to do is use information about the rate constant at one temperature to get the rate constant at another temperature, right? So we don't really have an equation yet to be able to deal with that, but we can get one, right? So we know that we're, there's gonna be a rate constant. Let's say we have a rate constant K1 at T1, right? We know that the linearized Arrhenius equation for this one would be ln K1 is equal to negative Ea over R, one over T1, plus the natural log of the frequency factor, right? Um, so then we can think about a second reaction, right? Or a second rate constant at a second temperature, right? So rate constant K2 at temperature T2, right? So that'll have natural log K2. It's gonna be equal to negative E sub A. So the activation energy does not change here, right? So we'll have the same activation energy over R, 1 over T2 plus ln A, right? Again, also, the uh, the frequency factor doesn't change. So what we can do here, since we know that the frequency factor is not changing for either one of these, we can actually get two related expressions. So in both cases, let's say in both of these cases, we solve for the frequency factor, right? So we have ln A is going to be equal to ln K1, plus E sub A R one over T one, right? And then for the second one, we'll have the natural log of A. It's gonna be equal to ln K two plus E sub A over R one over T two, right? So basically for this, case right well really for any of these cases right um this frequency factor is going to be the same at two different temperatures so you can actually set these two equal and when you do that if you set those two expressions equal then you get the following expression after setting these two equal and then doing some algebra then you get the following expression e sub a over r 1 over t1 minus 1 over t2 Right, so this is the expression that we can use here in order to solve the problem that we've been given, right? So, because this is an equation that relates two different rate constants at two different temperatures, right? So let's do it. So with this expression, right, we can actually use our property of natural logs to uh, expand this term on the right-hand side. So we'll have ln k2 minus ln k1 and that's going to be equal to E sub A over R, one over T1 minus one over T2. Right, so now we wanna solve for the rate constant at a different temperature. So we wanna isolate this K2. So we got ln K2 is gonna be equal to ln K1 plus E sub A over R, 1 over T1 minus 1 over T2, right? So uh, all we have to do now at this point is just plug in because we've solved for everything, right? Well, we have, we have all of these. We have the initial rate, right? They gave us the rate constant. They gave us the activation energy barrier, and they gave us the two temperatures that we need to consider. So the only thing we have to do is plug in at this point. Um, when you plug in everything here on the right-hand side, you end up with negative 9.8. Two, three, five. So all of the units should cancel out in this term and the same here with the natural log of the rate constant. So you end up with this number 
And then in order to uh, isolate K2, you're gonna take the exponential of both sides. So you do e to the negative 9.235. And then so that's going to give you a K2 of 9.756 times 10 to the negative 5 liters per mole per second. Right. So this gives you a uh, rate constant for a different temperature, right? Using the information for the rate constant and the kinetics at an initial temperature, right? So, so this is really neat that you can use the information at a single temperature um, and use this relationship, use, but using Arrhenius' equation, use this relationship in order to figure out the rate constant at an elevated temperature, right? In this case, at an elevated temperature. Okay, so that's one example. Um, let's look at a different example. So this one's longer, but it's actually a little bit easier. Um, so let's read through it. So you're given the following reaction. This is actually a really um, important reaction in organic chemistry called a substitution reaction. And you can note here that the hydroxy group kind of gets where that bromine is substitutes, right? They kind of switch positions here, right? So uh, you can notice that if you, if you notice the difference in the molecular formulas here. Um, so there's a really important reaction called a substitution reaction. So it says this ha reaction happens in a certain solvent and it's first order with respect to, uh, to this reactant, right? Uh, and zero order with respect to the hydroxide ion. In several experiments, the rate constant K was determined at different temperatures. A plot of ln K versus the inverse of temperature was constructed and resulted in a straight line with a slope of negative uh, 1.1 times 10 to the 4 Kelvin and a y-intercept of 33.5. Assume K has a unit of per seconds, right? So just first order uh, rate constant. Determine the activation energy for this reaction determine the value of the frequency factor and calculate the rate constant at 25 degrees C. So let's deal with the first one. They ask us to determine the activation energy barrier, right? So keep in mind um, our linear version of the Arrhenius equation. I'll write it here again, ln k equal to negative e sub a over r one over t plus the natural log of the frequency factor, right? So um, basically we have this in the Y equals MX plus B linear form, right? So if we wanna get the activation energy, then we know that that's gonna be our slope of this plot, right? So we're plotting LNK versus the inverse of temperature. So the activation energy is gonna be related to the slope. So what we have to do here is note that the slope is gonna be equal to the activation energy over the uh, gas constant. So in order to solve for the get for the activation energy, all we have to do is do some algebra here to get the activation energy by itself, right? So slope times the gas constant. I'll put a multiplication symbol there, right? So when you multiply, you have the activation energy. We have we know the gas constant. So the activation energy is going to be ninety one thousand four hundred fifty four joules per mole which when you think about that in terms of kilojoules you got 91 kilojoules per mole right? it seems reasonable so that's our activation energy barrier in this case part b is asking us to determine the value of the frequency factor now the frequency factor is you know in the y equals mx plus b format it's the b the y intercept right and it's giving you the y intercept here it says the y intercept is 33.5 right so um, in order to calculate the frequency factor, all we have to do is just take the y-intercept, right? So we have the y-intercept is equal to uh, the frequency factor, the natural log of the frequency factor. So that means that the frequency factor is just going to be E raised to the y-intercept. So we're basically gonna raise E to the uh, 33.5. And so that gives you 3.5, four times 10 to the 14 per seconds. Right, so uh, frequency is still, you know, there's a frequency factor, so it's not necessarily a frequency, but it's still measured in per seconds like you would for a frequency. 
So uh, this would be our value of the frequency factor. Okay, and the last thing that we have to do here is calculate um, calculate the rate constant, K, at 25 degrees C. So we've got our frequency factor, we've got our activation energy barrier, so we can stick all of this stuff into the general Arrhenius equation. Right, we've got negative E sub A over RT. Right, so um, we have our frequency factor, we can plug that in, we have our activation energy barrier, all of that. So when you plug it in and you get a final answer, you get 0 0.03357 per seconds, right, since it's first order. Okay, so these have been a few examples of applying Arrhenius' equation. In the previous video, we went through, you know, what it was and introduced a few different forms. And so hopefully this gave you a good uh, view of applications of Arrhenius' equation.